You know, our family was a football family. My dad started that. And when we were watching football, we were watching the Houston Oilers. We got a wild card playoff game against this team that shouldn't even be in the playoffs. The Oakland Raiders. And I'll never forget, I remember when that game was over, I think my father was probably just as devastated as I was. You know, of course, he understood the significance, I guess, of it a little bit more. But he understood another significance about that season. He said, you know, if our Oilers can't win, we're going to root for the Mexicans. When I talked to him about Jim Plunkett and Tom Flores, I did not talk to him about football per se. I talked to him about the role they had as leaders and what they were accomplishing and the fact that they were like us. To me, that was important. These two guys out of everybody, of all the teams in the National Football League, these were the only two guys that were like us. Before they met in Oakland, these two men were already pioneers. Tom Flores was not only the starting quarterback for the Raiders in their very first season in 1960, but he was also the first Latino starting quarterback ever in pro football. Ten years later, Jim Plunkett became the first Latino player to win the Heisman Trophy and to this day, the only Latino ever chosen first overall in the NFL draft. I didn't hear anything about his background because I didn't know anything about his background. His name was Plunkett for crying out loud. <laughs> I mean, that's not Rodriguez or Flores or something. So I, I never dawned on me and then, until I found out later and, and uh, followed him very closely through his pro career. If you look back on it, what are the odds? You know, two former quarterbacks, two Hispanics, you know, you know, one a coach, one a player, you know, being together. Uh, you know, on a particular team at any given time. You know, was, you know, in a sense, if you look back, kind of extraordinary. I mean, uh, who would have thought? My parents, uh, you know, raised three kids, you know, Mexican-American. Uh, my father was part German and Irish. Uh, came from uh, Albuquerque in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Came to California. And they had a tough time. They were, uh, my mother was totally blind, my father legally blind, but they managed to do a great job with three children. Well, I was born in Fresno. Uh, right in the Central Valley uh, of, of the state of California. My father was born in Durango, the state of Durango in Mexico. My mother's parents were born in Jalisco, but she was born in this country. Uh, but the heritage is still all uh, from Mexico. They, they both uh, are an embodiment of, uh, of, the, of the kind of the American dream, and, and they really are the quintessential uh, American, uh, American story. Flores had to win that job in Oakland. He had been cut by the Calgary Stampeders and the Washington Redskins, but the AFL was just starting, and the Raiders put him behind center for seven seasons. And though he finished out his career as a backup, he did get a Super Bowl ring with the Kansas City Chiefs. When his playing days were over, he became an assistant coach and helped Raiders coach John Madden win Super Bowl IV in 1976. Three years later, he took over the reins. Plunkett also had to do some convincing. Stanford wanted to make him a defensive end, but persistence and practice turned him into the best quarterback in the country. Although he could have gone pro after his junior year, he elected to stay in school, and in 1970, he led Stanford to a Rose Bowl upset of Ohio State. The Patriots made him their number one pick, but he became mired in the mediocrity of his teams, first in New England, then in San Francisco. By 1977, he was without a team. From the time I got released to the time I went to the tryout, you know, I was thinking about quitting football altogether. Maybe the press is right. Maybe, I, maybe I'm, I'm done. Jim was released by the Niners, so Ron Wolf brought him over, and uh, we worked him out. And I wanted to see if he was physically able to do all the things that we wanted to. And so he signed him, made him third string. Never been third string in his life. <laughs> it, it was humiliating to a certain extent to go out and have to try out you know, after being a number one pick, uh, you know, seven years earlier. It was tough. I mean, he was quiet. 
accepted it, worked hard, you know, watched, studied, you know, waiting for his chance. And then the next year I took over as head coach. Tom's first year, he had uh, Kenny Stabler, uh, and I was the backup, and I played very little. Uh, and the next year, they traded Kenny, and they brought in another quarterback. Jimmy, you have a very interesting quarterback situation here this year in Oakland. Uh, you got, we got four quarterbacks that we're looking at. Right now, I guess you're the number two guy. I imagine you're not happy with that situation, are you? Oh, you're never happy uh, not to be number one, I suppose, but that's just the way it happens to be. And, you know, you just work and, and practice hard and see what happens. You know, I thought I had the opportunity, at least the opportunity to, to fight for the job, but I, and that's when I asked to be traded. I told him, I said, I, I'm not going to do that. I said, because that would hurt the team. That would hurt the team if, if, I let you, if we let you go. So there I was stuck behind uh, another quarterback. Uh, but I was running out of patience and I was running out of time. I, you know, I'm getting up there in age and, you know, I, I wanted to play. Dan Pastorini was the starting quarterback when the 1980 season began with Jim as the backup. After Pastorini broke his leg in the fifth game, the two and three Raiders turned to Plunkett. I was nervous because if I don't go out there and perform now, you know, I might not ever get another chance. So it was very important that I go out there and play well. You know, and prior to the game, uh, Mr. Davis came up to me and he says, you know, Jim, it's not important that you play well, it's important that we win. That kind of, you know, made me feel a little bit better. Uh, but still, I had to go out and play and perform. If not, I might be gone. I think to the benefit of Jim, he had been there since 78, so he knew, you know, he knew our guys. Uh, it wasn't like he was brand new. And he, he fit perfectly for us, you know. Um, quiet leader. Himself having been a quarterback, he, know, he knows what I was going through. Uh, he helped me with the offense. He helped me understand what the Raiders like to do in situations. You know, I, I probably needed that relationship with, with a man like Tom uh, that really helped me through a very, very difficult time. Not your team, not my team, our team. I didn't preach it. You live it. Well, you know, we went on a pretty good winning streak after a two and three start. You know, that's a heck of a turnaround. I felt good again. I, I was making, coming up with a lot of big plays. We were really starting to rock and roll. We won some big games. The last game of the season in New York, we had to win that game. And we won it. You had to have a certain amount of character, uh, toughness, and, uh, and play what we used to call the Raider way. The soft-spoken duo of Flores and Plunkett had led the rowdy Raiders into the playoffs as a wild-card team. The team's trademark pride and poise had become el orgullo y el equilibrio. First playoff game for me in my life. A lot of pressure on Tom Flores, a lot of pressure on, you know, Jim Plunkett. You, you turned over the keys of the organization to, you know, a Latino head coach and a Latino quarterback who's been, you know, cast aside three different times. After trouncing Stabler and the Houston Oilers 27-7 in the wild card game, they went to Cleveland and upset the Browns 14-12, then to San Diego for the AFC Championship game, where they beat Dan Fouts and the favored Chargers 34-27. What had seemed impossible only weeks before, a trip to Super Bowl 15 in New Orleans to play the Philadelphia Eagles, was now a reality thanks to two men who had once been overlooked. When it was that big game, and, you know, history proves this point out, that Jim played big in big games. He really, really did. He made plays. And, and the playoffs, play after play after play, he just got the ball to the right guy. I felt we could win. But you don't think about that. My mind was getting us back to playing good football and become the best in the world. In the first quarter, Plunkett threw an 80-yard touchdown pass to Kenny King, at the time, the longest touchdown pass in Super Bowl history, to put the Raiders up 14-0. Our guys trounced the Eagles 27-10 in the Super Bowl. Plunkett, man, Plunkett played big. He became the first Latino player to win the Super Bowl MVP. And Tom Flores blazed his own trail by becoming the first Latino head coach to win the Super Bowl. I don't know about a trailblazer, you know. I, you know, I just think 
that we did a good job. I, you know, I did a good job of coaching. I uh, kept the team together. Jim did a wonderful, marvelous job of, of directing the team. As you look back, you know, I think we're both proud of the fact that, you know, we came from, you know, uh, at that time of you know, a minority group of people that they could, who can take a lot of pride in what we accomplished. And I, you know, I think that's a good feeling for, for both of us. You know, we're proud of the fact that we are Mexican American, that we, where we came from, what we accomplished, and people can look up to that and, and strive and achieve for, for success in their own right. And, and that's all good. People might not know the Tom Flory story or the Jim Plunkett story. One is because both of them were understated in their approach to dealing with the media or, you know, they're not going to pound their chest and howl at the moon and draw attention to themselves. And the other part of it is when they coached and when they played. If, if this had happened in today's NFL, it'd be a much bigger story. There are so many Latinos that are now becoming a part of this NFL, but the foundation is set in the two men that are Tom Flores and Jim Plunkett. To me, it is something of what the American dream is made of. To me, it's a story of what success for our people is made of. To me, it is a, I don't know, a beacon of what our children who are still mired in the in the uh, in the in the barrios who are still mired in the in the fields can look at and say hey i can do it